We're joined by 538's Galen Druk. Galen, thanks so much for joining us tonight. Uh, former President Trump, as you know, now facing multiple investigations, which have really dominated political headlines as of late. What's the latest polling showing as far as how voters are reacting to all this and how it could potentially impact the midterms this fall? Absolutely. A recent poll from Politico Morning Consult shows that 49% of Americans approve of the FBI search of Mar-a-Lago, while 37% of Americans disapprove. Now, that reflects similar numbers that we see in terms of how Americans are viewing some of the other investigations of President Trump, former President Trump, or investigations that may touch him. That also happens to be pretty similar to what his approval rating was for much of his presidency, about 50% of Americans disapproving, around 40% approving. We also see, though, that when it comes to broadly how Americans feel about whether or not Trump has been on the right side of the law, in that poll as well, we see that 58% of Americans say that Trump probably or definitely broke the law while he was president. That's a clear majority. So even if that means that independents, maybe some Republicans, in this poll in particular, a quarter of Republicans even said that Trump probably or definitely broke the law while in office. So there's a general sense here that he's not always on the right side of the law. And we heard earlier from Avery Harper on some of the key New York races. You've been also watching New York's 19th Congressional District special election tonight. Break down that race for us and how the impact of the abortion issue is playing out there tonight. New York's 19th congressional district is about as swingy as they get. Biden won by only a point and a half in 2020. He voted for Trump before that, and it voted for Obama twice. So this is a great testing ground for how the messages that Democrats and Republicans want to run on in the fall will do in a competitive race. And we have seen that the Democrat there, Pat Ryan, has run pretty heavily on abortion as an issue. Mark Molinaro, the Republican, has tried to avoid the issue. We're gonna find out tonight, based on the margin there, how that's going over. But regardless, we've already seen in polling that abortion has become a more salient issue for Americans. In a Pew poll out just today, we saw that in March, 40-some percent of Democrats said that abortion was a major issue for them when it comes to voting this fall. Now it's about 70 percent. Let's take a look at the, the state of play for control of the Senate. First, just break down the latest 538 Senate forecast for November. According to 538's forecast, Democrats have a 63 percent chance of keeping control of the Senate, and Republicans, of course, then have a 37 percent chance of winning control of the Senate. Now, what do those percentages mean in practice? To give some perspective, a good batting average in professional baseball is around 30 percent. So a talented hitter will hit the ball 30 percent of the time in a baseball game, which means that if you've ever seen a hitter hit the baseball, you know that things with a 30 percent chance of happening happen all the time, which is to say that this is not a done deal. Republicans could certainly win control of the chamber, but right now Democrats clearly have the upper hand, and their upper hand has grown. Their chance of controlling the chamber used to be only 40% at the beginning of the summer. Now it's grown to 63%. That's a really good analogy, the baseball one, that really helps put that in, in perspective for us. So Democratic chances, they're improving to hold on to the Senate. We heard Senate Mitch McConnell's recent comment on candidate quality hurting Republicans. Uh, what are some of the races where GOP candidates may be falling short of expectations? So what does Senator Mitch McConnell mean when he says that candidates may be struggling from quality issues? We know empirically from the work that we've done at 538 that all things being equal, candidates that are more towards the center of the political spectrum do better in competitive general elections. We also know that all things being equal, candidates who have run in and won elections previously also do better. We also know, empirically speaking, that candidates, and it may be intuitive as well, the candidates that aren't facing scandals also do better. So when we think about those three issues, who are some Republican nominees that we could look at that may not be high quality candidates? First, I would say Herschel Walker in Georgia. He's never run in an election before, he's never won an election before, and he has a lot of baggage. He's facing various scandals in the state. We can also look at J.D. Vance in Ohio. He's also uh, a newbie when it comes to running for elected office. He hasn't won before. Also, Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania. And so right now, we see that in all those three states, Democrat, the Democrat is actually leading in the polling average. 
that's surprising. You know, Ohio should be a real easy, you know, state to keep control of in the Senate for Republicans. You know, in an environment where there's a really unpopular president like Joe Biden, you know, his approval rating is still only around 40%. Republicans should be able to pick up a state like Georgia. They should probably be able to keep a state like Pennsylvania. But they're struggling from issues with candidate quality because they're running a lot of new candidates who don't have a lot of experience. And as though, even though Trump may have made it look easy in 2016, it is quite hard to run for office, especially statewide office, if you have no experience doing it. 538's Galen Drew, we thank you so much again for your time and insight. Appreciate it. Absolutely.